what got me thinking along these lines was watching a, a video by Keith Rucker. Real nice guy. He uh, he operates out of um, the Georgia Museum of Agriculture, uh, someplace over there. But uh, he rebuilds machines, and uh, he's, he's a lot better presenter than I am. But he was mucking about with a, uh, a bench press, and it's based on a bottle jack. And his frustration, and along with a lot of us, was uh, all the work you have to do to get actually to the point where you're going to start doing your task because of these uh, these higher, we'll say, let's do a comparison. That's a four-ton model, see? It even says so. And most of your bottle jacks have the same pump setup, almost the same diameter, same volume of displacement. And for a lower power unit, it uses a narrower ram and a smaller amount of volume to fill up per the uh, ratio uh, compared to the displacement of the pump. So yes, you get a lot more travel on a small pump versus a small jack. So that's, that's, that's no hardship there. But when you get to the bigger size, this is a 12 ton model. Uh, for you curious, it's a jet, a jet 12 ton. And since you have this basically the same volume of displacement here, but you have to fill up a greater amount of volume here, well, you get a lot less bang for your buck, so to speak. And it's even worse when you've got the 20 ton and the, the 40 ton models. Because in order to get the ability to lift that amount of weight or apply that amount of pressure, you, uh, you all you're doing is making the cylinder bigger but keeping the displacement on your pump the same, so you get the same effort, but you can lift more amounts because you have to, the, the displacement, it all has to do with uh, pounds, uh, pressure acting on a, a particular surface area, but that's all for a, a later time. But anyway, for Keith, he was messing with this, um, doing all that, say you have to get up to here, so you're, you're wasting a lot of calories there, getting that sucker up there. Now, granted, you can run out and get yourself a an air-powered jack, and those are roughly twice the cost. And what they have, and I can't show you because I don't have one, is uh, it basically has a duplicate cylinder or a duplicate pump somewhere on the unit, and it has an air motor that just does this for you on a separate unit, and uh, I guess the beauty of that is um, it'll actually do the work for you. Once you reach the point where you have to apply real force, well, the, the motor over here is strong enough to do that part for you. But for most of us, the, cheap, uh, the, the biggest drawback with a standard jack is getting up there to begin with. So I found the easiest way to do it is find your uh, fill plug. And whether it be a screw or a, uh, a rubber plug like this, I just drill a hole in there. Now we're going to do air over hydraulic. There you go. Now you're ready to go. Start jacking away and everything is exactly as normal. All you're doing is getting rid of all that work to get up to this point. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, now that we got that out of the way, uh, let's talk about some of the other stuff. The outside of a bottle jack, this is nothing more than a reservoir. That holds the fluid until it gets pumped in to the, the high pressure side, which is the inner side of this, and uh, we'll probably cover that in a, in a later video. As I said, it's just, a, it's just a reservoir, and it's made heavy just because these things get beat up a lot. And, and uh, no sense, you know, getting holes in it and such. Your fill level, your fill hole here is, is at least on every jack I've seen so far, uh, is placed to where anything below the hole, if you fill it up to this point, uh, that's, that's enough oil to get you full travel uh, up, uh, up and down there. So if you happen to have excess oil in there, well, when it comes down, the excess is going to, you know, get squirted out the thing out the out the plug here because 
it's now not sealed anymore. So if any oil squirts out of there, no biggie, let it squirt. Because once it stops dribbling out, uh, the, the, the real level, or the proper level, should be maintained and, uh, and established. Now the one uh, I got you is, don't just take a sharp instrument and poke it in there. Because if you have uh, this rubber style bungee plug thing here, here uh, bung, is that what it is? A rubber bung? Uh, if you just poke a hole in there with a sharp instrument, it's going to act like a basketball valve. Because that, uh, as soon as you withdraw the pointy instrument, you technically have a hole, but the pressure of the rubber is still going to keep it tight. And, and that will provide a lot of fun because if the pressure can't get out, you're going to still have a head pressure in here and you're not going, your cylinder is not going to retract when you let go of the release because uh, you got so much head pressure in here, it's still forcing the fluid into the high pressure side. So when you drill that out, uh, make sure you see, you know, pull out the plug, drill it, make sure you see light through it so it's a clean opening. That way uh, you'll hear the hiss and the, uh, the pressure will release and equalize so your cylinder is able to retract. You don't want that acting as a valve. Even though it's easily overcomable by the air pressure in your gun, uh, your springs are not going to have enough pressure to reverse the action and push the air out that little hole. So make the hole big enough to where it's 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 open and uh, open open the atmosphere, so to speak, and uh, and everything will be groovy. Now, if you're concerned about uh, your your air pressure whacking that thing on your thumb or something, I put together one of these, and uh, it's basically just a valve with uh, the quick disconnects on the ends. Uh, these, of course. Available from Harbor Freight, five, six bucks, or whatever they are, and they're 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 touted as an inline regulator. Well, they're not. You know, it doesn't regulate anything except uh, uh, volume, I guess. Call a volume knob. That's a volume knob for air. Because there's no there's no diaphragm, there's no bleed off, there's nothing that will. You know, you can't turn that down and get 12 psi. You're going to get whatever your hose is. Like if this is 100 psi. You're still going to get 100 psi at the other end. It's just going to get there slower. So I said it's just a volume control. It's basically it's a valve, and somebody just stamped, you know, numbers around the end. But I just use that to turn it down, turn my flow down, and that just makes this part more manageable. Ta -da. So I hope that gives you a hand, Keith, and anybody else who might be watching this. That is like the simplest uh, trick you can do, and it doesn't cost you a dime. <laughs>